so this is the first question that I have got that is x y z is given to you so before moving I just want to explain that when we have any functional dependence you know that is a gives you b so you always have to keep in mind if you have any value in a that is being repeated suppose one is there one is there so if a is functionally related to b or is functionally dependent on b then for every value that is repeated in a it should have a unique value in b so if in first row one is function dependent on b and the value is 2 so everywhere where your 1 is present okay if 1 is repeated and if it is present so everywhere it should have the value 2 only this is basically what it meant by functional dependencies okay so now they have given you an instance and they have given you four examples four options and they are asking you which of the following functional dependencies are satisfied by this instance so let us check for x, y gives you z. So x, y may we have 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 3, 2. All these values are different. Okay? All these combinations are different. So whatever value they have, it is okay. But when we will see, we will see z gives related to y or z is functionally dependent on y. So if you see here, here z is having 2, 2 times and 3, 2 times. So if your 2 is giving you 4, so anywhere if 2 is present in Z, it should give you 4 only. But here it is giving 2. So that is why Z is not functionally dependent on Y. Now we will check for option B. So that is why option A is cancelled out. If you see option B, YZ gives you X. So now we will check for YZ. So YZ ke combinations jo hai, 4, 2, 5, 3, 6, 3, 2, 2, they all are different. So no worry. Now for Y and Z, y is having all the values different so yes y b is your option correct option y because y may koi b value is not repeating itself so 4 is related to 2 5 is related to 3 so all these values are different so it is okay then we have y z gives you x so y z may be we have different different values no repetition so okay but let's check for x give you z or not so in x one is occurring three times and here one is having value 2 and here one is value having 3 so that is why c is also wrong that is this one is not function dependent x z y so x z ke combination is 1 2 it is giving you 4 1 3 is giving you 5 and here 1 3 is again giving you 6 so these two values are different so that is why this is also not functionally dependent so d is also cancelled so that is how the correct answer is option number b okay so the first question second one is that key suppose you have the relation u and the attributes are p q r s and t and they have given you the following function dependencies that P is able to function dependent is function dependent on QR and RS when combined together is dependent on T. And they're asking which of the following function dependencies can't be inferred from, can't be inferred. See, okay? So first we have PS sub T. So what we will do, we will try to find the closure of PS from these two function dependencies. And if it will contain T, then it means yes, it can be inferred. Okay. So what is the closure of PS? First, we will have PS only. Then we have P say we can relate to QR. So we will write QR as well. And RS when combined together will give you T. So you can see that when you will take the closure of PS with the help of these two functional dependencies, you can find T. So that is why this first can be inferred. It can be inferred. Then you will take the closure of R and we will take the closure of R with these two function dependencies only. So we will take the closure of R, it will give you R only because T is obtained when we have combined R with S. Only R alone cannot give you T. So that is why this can't be inferred. So can't only they are asking you for option 2 is your right answer. Let's check for others also. So next we have P infers R. So we will take P closure. It will be P Q R only. So, P is able to derive R. So, yes, it can be inferred. And then we have P S to Q. So, P S to Q, if you see here. So, P S to Q, when we take the closure of P S, it gave us Q also. So, this also can be inferred. So, only thing that can't be inferred is option number 2. That is R inferring to T. Now, this question, uh, I don't know from where you have taken. But the answer is wrong. Why? Because if you see, if you check for option L1, okay, L1 may what they are saying, L1 may they are saying that A is A N B M A K, right? And they are saying ki K is equal to M N. Now suppose if you take the value of N as 2 and the value of M as 3, 
okay so what will be the value of k now value of k will become 2 times 3 that is 2 3 is 6 okay so now let's take a stack and try to solve this by taking with the stack so what will be the string now string will be a a b b b and 6 times a so again 1 2 3 4 5 6 so our result should be an empty stack in the end so if if this is an cfg so what we will do we will enter this double a's and we will enter these three b's okay so now we will start popping so a is there again pop this this one a 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 pop this now we don't have anything for this one so that is why this is not a cfg yes if in case instead of m multiply by n they should have if it did would have been a raised to power n b raised to power m a raised to power k and k is equal to m plus n then it would have been a cfg okay try it yourself then it would have been a cfg but this language l1 where you multiplying it is not a cfg it can be solved with the help of turing machine okay it can be solved with the help of turing machine but it cannot be solved with the help of a stack single stack so that is why l1 is not a cfg i'll write over here l1 is not a cfg next we have l2 so l2 may what they are saying basically a raised to power m plus n b raised to power n plus m so if you see here l2 is a raised to power n plus m b raised to power n plus m and we have c raised to power m so i can write n plus m as k right so what it will become it will become a raised to power k b raised to power k c raised to power m so there is only one comparison between these two m se koi comparison hai nahi so that is why this is your cfg okay now let's talk about l3 so what is l3 l3 is a raised to power n b raised to power n c raised to power m and the condition is m is less than n so now if you see here there are two things first we have to compare these two and then we have to compare we have to find that c should be less than b so if i take n is equal to 2 or n is equal to 3 and m is equal to 2 so string will become a a a b b b and c c so when you will take the stack with you so you will first you have to compare a and b so push a and then you will pop b so pop 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 now for this c you have nothing to compare with so that is why it is not your cfg not cfg okay so i think in this question what they would have done now uh, by mistake they would have uh, they would have um, done this by mistake so the answer will be l1 and l3 l1 and l3 both are not your context free grammars okay so l1 mein agar yahan pe m plus n hota then it would have been a cfg but m multiply n hai so isliye ye cfg nahi hoga okay so this is the solution for the three problems that you have asked for